hey, we've all got to start somewhere, right? Gucci wasn't made in a day. Hey everyone, how are you? My name is Elliot and welcome to my second channel. This right here is a mini Jaguar. This is a sewing machine that I picked up for the grand total of 15 British pounds from a charity shop. Now, I recently got into sewing because I've been making some videos on this. This is an old Game Boy sewing machine. Now, these things are super expensive, so I don't really wanna be learning how to sew on something that's actually very rare. The other issue as well is that it weighs 15 kilograms which is just ridiculous. So this was perfect. I walked into the charity shop and I saw it there. Um, I think they had a price of 20 pounds on it. When I got it, it didn't work. I had no idea what was wrong with it, but it just did not work. So I was kind of a little bit gutted because I'd really sort of fallen in love with it. Jaguar is actually the Japanese um, brand. I think it might be Singer in the UK. Um, or something like that. So I was really happy to have a Japanese one and I have no idea how it's made it all the way over to Jersey, uh, Channel Islands in the UK. But yeah, it's a really, really self-explanatory thing to use and I thought in today's video, we'll have a little go at making something. I'll show you the sewing machine and see what you think. And uh, yeah, and hopefully you guys will get into sewing because it's a really, really fun thing. So you can see by the size of my hand, I mean, I have got a big hand, but this is a a really, really, really small sewing machine. For a comparison, here is an iPhone uh, 12 Max, and uh, you can see there it's it's maybe about six of those or five of those or something. It's, it's, it's not that big. Definitely for a sewing machine, it's not that big at all. Now, I have managed to get it working. Essentially, what was wrong with it was that all of the wires were, not the wires, sorry, the, the, um, the thread was all in a big twist, um, which was a little bit gutting because I had no idea what to do. Uh, but I managed to get it all fixed. So let me swap over to this camera, which might look a little bit horrendous, but here we go. All right, we're over to this camera. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of the thing. So here we go. This is a little drawer. Inside this drawer is some little goodies. You've got some uh, a, little, a little brush. Um, you've got some different needles. Um, you've got various different adapters for the actual base of the, the, the sewing machine. I have no idea what any of the words are for it, so you'll have to forgive me. Now, this slides out, and that is where you're going to replace the bobbin thread. Now, the bobbin thread is the, the thread that essentially keeps the top thread in when you stitch into, a, into fabric. So it is a really important thing, and on this one, it's an incredibly confusing looking mechanism. Whereas on my uh, Game Boy sewing machine, it's really, really basic. So I managed to get it figured out and uh, that's all nice and working now. So this little piece slides back on like so. Okay, now as for the buttons, as you can see, there really aren't a lot. You've got a on off switch down here. So you've got off, low and high. Uh, that's obviously off, and then you've got a lower speed and a higher speed. So there's no actual manual adjustment for speed, unlike on that one where there is. Now this is a slightly different one. I think it was in a completely different form on the Game Boy sewing machine. Um, so I'm not, I wasn't sure what this was when I first saw it, but now, as you can see, it makes quite a lot of sense. Essentially what this does is it changes the size um, of the gap between each stitch. So you've got a really, really small one, uh, or a really, really big one. And then there's this little nice sort of knurled uh, knob on the top, which means that you can actually sort of manually keep it there. Or if for whatever reason you wanted to, uh, to change it on the fly, you can sort of slide it down. And then if you slide it all the way down to the bottom, it's gonna do a reverse stitch, which is where you get a sort of a, a better locked in stitch uh, so you do that at the start and at the end of a, of, a, of a thread line, if that's the right word. I'm making it all up as I go along. So this is the, uh, the sort of the wheel on the side. So that's going to make the, uh, the needle go up and down. So you can manually uh, change that. You've got your bobbin thing on the top. You've got where your thread sits. This is the handle. And then over here, we've got the different stitches. Now, obviously on the Game Boy, you can you uh, you actually change that on the interface of the Game Boy, but on this, you just change this little wheel and that's gonna change the different thread pattern. And then finally, you've got your sort of resistance here and then the start and stop button. So there we have it, the Jaguar, the mini Jaguar. 
So what I thought we could do in this video is have a go at just stitching something very, very basic. Um, I recently made this, which is a Game Boy Advance SP. It was a modded one uh, that I did that has all of the bells and whistles and looks really, really nice. Um, but one of the things I like doing is making little bags for my Game Boys just to keep them nice and protected. So I thought, let me grab some really cool, nice fabric and we're gonna make ourselves a little pouch for the Game Boy Advance SP. And I really, really hope that people get into sewing because I think it's quite a, a nice, calming escape from the craziness in the world. And at the end of it, you get yourself a little thing. Now, things are typically obtained with money. And if you can rip up your old clothes, you can make things for free once you've bought the sewing machine um, or at a very low cost of the thread. So let's have a go at making a thing. So I've got my fabric. What we're gonna be using is this, which is a nice sort of velvet soft liner uh, that we're gonna put inside and that's gonna keep it from getting sort of scratched and everything and just keep it nice and cozy. And then I picked up recently from a charity shop. This right here is a Rugrats curtain from 1995. Now it's been completely washed and cleaned. It smells absolutely great, but look at how cool the designs are on the front. So, we have our two pieces of fabric. This is a good start. Right, what we're gonna do uh, is just take a rough sort of measurement. You can see we've got plenty of fabric here to work with. So, what we are now going to do, um, I've cut a nice straight line on the top um, of both the liner and the sort of the main fabric. And what we are going to start by doing is creating a hem, which will um, sort of make a nice edge to the top of the, the case, if you want to call it that, um, and that will make it look a lot more professional. So you want to get a sort of good 10 millimeters on the top or about half an inch maybe, um, and then you're going to fold it over like that. And that is going to be our hem. Now, if you want to, you can take it a step further and shift everything down a tiny bit more and do a sort of a double uh, roll, which is definitely not the correct term, but by doing that, what you're then gonna be able to get is an even nicer edge um, to, to, to show on the inside of the bag. So I'm gonna have a go at doing that. So I set it to the most basic stitch. We're gonna have a relatively close line. We're gonna start off by doing a reverse stitch um, and then we're gonna go all the way down and hopefully keep it nice and straight. Right, let's have a look at how that's turned out. So I did see the thread sort of drifting off a little bit. Um, you can see the line is not totally straight. It does go down slightly, but, ah, uh, no, and look, it's not even, it's not even connected that piece. Ah, oh, that's a little bit annoying. Well, look, it's only a practice one. Uh, I haven't done any sewing in a while, but look, I basically didn't do the line straight enough. Um, and you can see here that this part of the hem hasn't held down, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, I could probably just like glue it down or something and you'd never know, um, but yeah, a little bit gutted about that. Okay, so let's ignore that and continue on and just imagine that that went well. The next thing that we're gonna do is figure out where we are going to have um, our sort of edge piece and, and then where we're gonna stitch it back um, along the side and along the bottom. So. Let's have a quick look um, at where we want that sort of design to go. So I like that. I like the star on the back there. Um, if we shift it over a little bit more, we're gonna lose quite a lot of the star. So I say it's better if we have sort of half and half of both. Okay, let's uh, see if the Game Boy still fits inside. Yeah, absolutely perfectly. That's exactly what we wanted. There we go. That is all nice and in there. Okay, so the next thing to do is go along the bottom and that is gonna create our final stitch and this little pouch is done. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. 
Okay, so we've done all of the stitching. Now, everything went a little bit peak tong uh, at the last minute. Um, it started getting a little bit caught. Um, I do think it needs probably some lubrication and stuff, but hopefully this is still gonna work. So let's go ahead now and cut this all out uh, and and see what it looks like. Um, yeah, this was a little bit rough. I'm definitely not a sewing expert, but hey, we've all got to start somewhere, right? Gucci wasn't made in a day. Okay, now let's fold it inside out and see what it's saying. Well, the colors look fantastic. Yeah, you know what? That doesn't look too bad. It is a little bit annoying about the, the hem part. And I'm wondering if it might just be easier if I try and cut it out. Okay, you know what? That looks infinitely better. It's annoying because now, you know, you can sort of see the, the edge of the fabric and you can see the stitch, but it's a lot better than having some big, massive part flapping around. Right now, let's do a test fit and see how it looks. Oh, yes, that is spot on. Look at how cool that is. Oh man, I'm absolutely buzzing about that. Now, loads of people say, why don't you get some Velcro and, or a zip or something, but essentially this is so that when I store them um, in a box or in a shelf or something, um, they don't scratch. They're sort of just nicely stacked next to each other. What do you think of my little creation? I absolutely adore this sewing machine. It's just amazing. Uh, gonna need to find out why it's all of a sudden just started freezing up, jamming up a little bit. Sometimes it just gets a little bit all twisted up and uh, it just needs to be re-threaded everywhere. Um, but it, I think it does definitely need oiling or lubricating or taken apart and given a good clean. Maybe we'll do that in another video, but yeah, 15 pounds well spent. Look at that, I've now created a little thing. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.